people are posting some of the images that they're able to generate with Grok too. And I gotta say, so far it seems much wilder than any other image generation model I've seen. It really sounds like it doesn't refuse to produce any of these prompts. Some of these images I can't even show on camera. Well, we knew this week a big model is gonna get released and it was. But this seemed like we were misled on pretty much every single other point about this whole thing. So let's start at the beginning. First of all, Grok 2 is released. The beta version is live as of August 13th, 2024. So there's two models, Grok 2 and Grok 2 Mini. So that follows kind of a pattern of what OpenAI and others have been doing, having the larger, smarter model, having a usually faster, cheaper, smaller model as well. And apparently this model was available for us to use for some time. We've tested in the previous video. It was on the LM system leaderboard in the uh, chatbot arena. It was known as sus column R. Does that ring a bell? The thing is, when you asked sus column R who made it, it would say it was made by some mysterious column AI company that didn't really resemble any company that actually exists. But now we know it's XAI, it's Elon Musk, it's Grok. So they've introduced an early version of Grok 2 under the name Sus Calamar into the chatbot arena, where it outperformed both Claude and GPT-4 on their leaderboards in terms of its overall ELO score. So as you can see here, this is kind of the early version of Grok, beating out the vast majority of the models out there. This is GPT-4.0, the May release. So as you can see, it could be on the same level as it. So once we get more votes, we'll kind of see how it all shakes down, but maybe it's a little bit less, maybe it's equal to. And the only two models that are significantly better are Gemini 1.5 Pro and ChatGPT 4.0, the August 08 release. So here it is, it's confirmed by LMSYS. Receiving over 12,000 community votes, Sus Calamar has secured the number three spot in the overall leaderboard. It excels in coding hard prompts and math. So as you can see here, it's listed now, it's showing as XAI being the organization behind Sus Column R. And here's the win rate against, for example, Gemini 1.5 Pro and GPT 4.0. So as you can see here, it's, it's very, very close. The win rate is just a few percentage points off. And they also have this other chart that they call AI tutor preference for factuality. This is their internal evaluation for the various models. And in fact, most of the AI labs will have their own internal evaluation system to see where their model stands, how it performs against other ones. So they're probably not using kind of the standard benchmark tests. Everyone's kind of got their own prompts and stuff that they run the models through to kind of figure out how good it is. So with XAI, they're using this AI tutors to evaluate the model. So they're saying our AI tutors engage with our models across a variety of tasks that reflect real world interactions with Grok. During each interaction, the AI tutors are presented with two responses generated by Grok. And then they're graded based on specific criteria that they have in their guidelines. The two key areas are following instructions, number one, and providing accurate factual information. They also include kind of the more standard benchmarks that we're all familiar with, such as GPQA, MMLU, Human Eval, etc. So these are kind of the standard ones that a lot of the, whether it's Google or OpenAI, they all kind of try their models on all the various benchmarks and they'll usually post the ones that they're doing the best at. So there's a little bit of cherry picking going on, but while well, you got to take it with a grain of salt, in general, it's a good jumping off point for understanding kind of how good the model is. You're not really going to know until you test it yourself for your own use cases, but it's kind of at a glance tells you roughly where the model is. So first of all, Grok 2 is a big leap from Grok 1.5. Not only that, but as far as I can tell, it smashes GPT-4 Turbo and Claude 3 Opus. It beats it out on every test, at least of the ones they chose to list here. The other big thing is, of course, that Grok has access to real-time information because it's integrated with X. Elon Musk was talking about this on the Lex Freedom podcast, saying that's one big advantage that Grok has. It has complete, unrestricted real-time access to Twitter to X. It's able to explain funny memes, write a colorful game of life simulation in Pygame, and be used as assistant on the X platform. So X Premium and Premium Plus users will have access to the two new models and the AI assistant powered by Grok2. And they're mentioning that they're collabing with Black Forest Labs. This will allow for AI image generation within Grok. Some people are speculating that the Suscolum R name could have been from a Heinlein book, Robert A. Heinlein, called The Sixth Column. This would make sense. I mean, Heinlein is a very well-known science fiction writer. Elon Musk, of course, loves science fiction. Heinlein wrote Starship Troopers, Stranger in a Strange Land, and all the books behind uh, Lazarus Long and his uh, adventures. 
And as you're watching these benchmarks, keep in mind that right now we believe that Grok 3 is coming later this year. People are posting some of the images that they're able to generate with Grok 2. And I got to say, so far, it seems much wilder than any other image generation model I've seen, other than maybe unstable diffusion, if you know what that is. It really sounds like it doesn't refuse to produce any of these prompts. Some of these images I can't even show on camera, but it produces accurate looking Vikings. I doubted for a second if this was real or not, but the thing is they post the link that's to the image with the prompt that has been used to generate it. So it's a X link specifically for sharing your Grok images. And if you click on it, it'll actually generate your own sort of version of that image. Here's that one, for instance. If you ask it to speculate about a alternate universe where Elon Musk becomes obese, morbidly obese, and how it would affect the various companies that he runs, it will do so. The Boring Company is now a fast food delivery system called the Boring Burger Express. And Elon Musk looks like this. You can't make this up. He's had too much of the Boring Burger Express. Also seemingly doesn't really care about any copyright issues with the image generation, excellent text in images, and much, much more. That's it for today. Hope you enjoyed that. My name is Wes Roth, and thank you for watching.